Shirk is the big zero. You are praying, you are keeping fast, you are performing Hajj, you are doing Umrah every year, you are doing this, you are doing that, but you are doing some form, some form of shirk also. All thing multiplied zero comes to zero. Now these are the people. Walau ashraku, had they committed shirk, so how important it is to understand what is shirk? What are the different modes of shirk? Different shapes of shirk? Different forms of shirk? And I have a lecture on that, you know, a two hours lecture. To have an understanding, we must comprehend this shirk changes forms. Sometimes it is in the form of idol worship. Sometimes it becomes in the form of popular sovereignty. This is the biggest shirk of our days. Sovereignty. Materialism. We have all the faith in matter. Not the least in Allah who created the matter. All this faith on matter and material means. This is now the very few among the Hindus also go to temples to worship these idols. Very few of them. Very few of them. You know, this disease of shirk has changed forms. And you must know, you must be able to recognize what form this disease has taken in our time. Very important. Had they committed shirk, all they had been doing good deeds would have come to a zero, would have vanished and would have gone in vain. They are the people whom we gave the book. Now this is the another word, hukm. We have been finding with book, hikmah. Atainahul hikmah. But here hukm. Hukm means authority. Because from among them were the rulers also. Daud was a king. Suleiman was a king. And most of the prophets of Bani Israel they were actually the chiefs of their community. Kanat Banu Israel, Tasusuhumul Ambiya, Kullama Halaka Nabiyun, Khalafahu Nabiyun. So they are the people to whom we gave our book and then the authority and one Nubuwa and the prophethood. Fain Yakfur Biha Haulai. And if these people, who are these? Haulai, O Muhammad, your nation. Or those people who, who claim to believe in these prophets. If they are not evaluating these things as they should have done. And they are not grateful. And they are not accepting these things as they should have accepted. So we have assigned for this another nation who will not be unmindful, ungrateful for these things. What does it mean? You know, the people who believed in all these prophets, they, are, they were the Jews. They are now turning away their faces from this guidance. We have selected another nation. This nation is, is in the beginning. It is going to form. That is the Ummah of Muhammad Because this surah is Makki. Actually, the declaration that now you have become a ummah, that, that these ayat, they were revealed in Madhavi. Come to Bukhaira Ummati. Now you have, you have qualified that position. But now, up till this time, this ummah was in the offing, as you call it. It was in offing. So we have, you know, we have designated this thing, this position, to another nation, and they will not be ungrateful. Ulaikal ladina hadallahu fabi hudahu 
they are the people whom Allah had guided, all these prophets. So you also follow their guidance. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am not demanding from you any reward for what I am doing to you. I am conveying the message of Allah to you. Uh, have I ever de demanded from you any salary? Have I asked you for any contributions? I don't ask you any, any reward for it. In who I love, zikra alami, and it is a reminding for the all of the world. I am a reminder. Anta muzakkir, fazakkir innama anta muzakkir. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir. Go on reminding them. You are a reminder. Wama qadru Allah haqqa qadri. And they do not value value Allah as they ought to have valued Him. Ma qadru Allah haqqa qadri. You know our attitude and behavior depends upon the values which we assign to different things. How important it is to have a bigger house. Although it might be on mortgage, but it is important to have a better house, big house. How important it is to have a bigger car. This is something value. And we are pursuing it. So everything, you know, value structure that underlies our behavior. What values you have assigned to different things. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stands highest in your priorities, his pleasure is the most valuable thing. For that, I am ready to sacrifice anything. Then you are a true mu'min. In the last tara minal mu'minin anfusam wa mwalahu bianna lahu jannah. So actually these words appear in the Quran many times. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. And the basic reason of shirk is that man fails to evaluate Allah as he should have and as he ought to have evaluated him. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. Is qalu ma anzalallahu ala basharim min shayi. Now one example of this is when they said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sent down on any human being anything. You claim that Quran is being sent down to you from Allah. No, Allah has never sent down anything. And this actually was on the instigation of the Jews. Because till such time, you know, the news of the Prophet ﷺ had reached all the corners of the Arabian Peninsula. Now the Jews at Medina, they were perturbed. They were hoping that the last prophet will come from among them. Because for 2,000 long years, it was their, you know, their proprietorship. So to, so to say, that all the prophets were coming, you know, in Bani Israel. Books were given to them. Torah, Zabur, Injil. So they were hoping that the last prophet also will be raised from among them. So they were perturbed. And they listened, you know, the news were coming. There is a person in, in, in Mecca who claims to be prophet. So actually, they were, they were trying to preempt, you know. And in that, you know, they were trying to misguide the people of Mecca. No, no, no. Allah has not, never sent, you know. Because maybe there are some people of Mecca, they might have approached some of the learned people from among the Jews. What, what's your opinion? We have a man who says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down to him his book. Oh, no, 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 nothing of the sort. Is qalu Allah has never sent down anything on any human being. Qul man anzal al kitab al ladhi jaabi Musa. You know, in the same coin, reply in the same coin. Qul man anzal al kitab al ladhi jaabi Musa. Who sent down the book which Musa brought? You claim that a book was brought by Musa Islam. Who sent it down? If Allah has not sent down anything on any human being, who sent down the book which Musa brought? Nuram wa hudal dinnas. It was a light and a guidance for humanity. You have 
put it in different on different sheets different parchments not one book like this in parts separately so that whenever there is need you show one part and you can hide the other part because in quran also you have it that there is one ayah la taqrabu salata wantum sukara if you don't read wantum sukara la taqrabu salata don't go near prayer okay i am not praying so in this same way there can be so many things if you hide one thing and you you show only part of it tubduna ha wa tuhfuna kasira you take it out and for, for the people show it to the people and also you are hiding much of it tajaluna hu qaratisa you have turned it into parchments and separate sheets and you hide much thereof some of it you show out وَعُلِّمْ تُمْ مَا لَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنْتُمْ وَلَا عَبَاوْكُمْ And they were, you were taught what your forefathers didn't knew. Torah came to you. And because before Torah, several hundred years passed, when they had no book, they were Bani Israel, they were the progeny of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, they were twelve tribes from the twelve sons of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, but they had no book. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first book that Allah sent down was Torah. Qul Allah, say to them, Allah sent that Torah. But it implies, the same Allah has sent Quran to me. So mazarhum fi khodin yalabun. Then you just leave them alone, plunging into the vain discourses of theirs. Now don't enter into further argument, leave them.